Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and Unreal Fest in Seattle just wound down some major announcements there and I'm going to focus on one very specifically. That is the release of Unreal Engine 5.5. So yes, Unreal Engine 5.5, if you head on over to everyone's favorite launcher, the Epic Games Store, you will find that the, in the Epic Games launcher, there is now Unreal Engine 5.5 preview available. Obviously, this is a preview. Don't even think about using it in a production environment, but we do have some exciting new features to talk about that are in Unreal Engine 5.5. Now, the weird thing is there's no blog or release notes or anything to go along with this particular release, so I'm going to let the announcements come straight from the horse's mouth, and that is going to be from the actual session itself, as we will get to in just a second. Another thing I will point out is Tim Sweeney is still the most awkward public speaker I have ever seen in my life. You can literally tell while he is up there on stage that he is in his own personal hell. And I can sympathize with that. I hate public speaking as well, uh, but it's just one of those things. Every time I watch Tim give a keynote. It's like, oh, that poor guy, he does not want to be there. All right, anyways, let's jump in and take a look at what we can expect in Unreal Engine 5.5. So the first announcement we have is around nanite skeletal meshes. And with 5.5, we now have support for nanite skeletal meshes. <laughs> While this feature is still experimental, we've overcome many complex hurdles. It currently supports linear blend skinning combined with dynamic displacement, and we're working on adding translucency support for high-quality characters. With this feature, you'll get incredibly fast rendering of crowds of hundreds of high-quality characters, including metahumans. Of course, we got the usual and expected updates as well. Obviously, we've got improvements to uh, Lumen, the rendering on the back end. We have a new uh, denoiser that has been inserted as well. And of course, we've got movements towards 60 frames per second ray tracing technology. Nothing really completely new in this area other than the new denoiser, uh, but definitely a focus on uh, performance improvements just on a general case. This next part though, this is definitely the star of the show and I'm mostly going to let them go ahead and describe it in their own words because the nuance of this is quite interesting and this is the new thing that they are calling mega lights. This kind of seems to be what nanite was for lighting, uh, for, for geometry, it, mega lights is for lighting. It's basically going to free you up to use literally thousands of lights in your scenes, new types of lighting environments. Again, I'm just going to let them demonstrate and describe it because this part is definitely mind-blowing. So let's just jump in and see the demo. I'm going to cut it down a little bit for time, but you're going to get just the full demonstration that they made. Moving on, let's talk mega lights. Unreal Engine is at its best when users can express themselves without technical constraint. Like Nanite did for triangles or Lumen for a global illumination, Megalights removes limitation in a whole new category, direct lighting and shadows. Take, for example, these textured area lights, considered the gold standard of offline rendering. Here they are, in real time, spilling vibrant color into the scene, casting soft shadows and illuminating the environment in a way artists simply couldn't have done before. And a whole new tool in the Creator's Toolkit is huge, but that's not the only way Megalites makes things better. Let's see what's next. So it looks like Echo has found herself in quite an interesting marketplace here. It's just about to open for the day. Let's turn on some of these shop fronts and see what's for sale. There's something missing, though. The scene, it's flat. It's undefined. Let's turn on shadows, but not just for a few important lights, for every single light in the entire view. From these main shop fronts to the screens, the displays, the flickering oil lamps, string lights, candles, signs, we're free to use whatever lights we need to tell our story and bring this beautiful environment to life. Now, the density of light sources you see here, it's extremely high. And 
this is what you get when artists are working playfully, without limitation. Okay, let's go back to the scene. Victor, let's go further. Let's activate all these animated drones and robots. Over 1,000 individual shadow casting light sources in this view alone. Wow, like little fireflies. All of these lights, they're movable, dynamic, scattering through the volumetric fog, and Megalights handles this impressive scene without missing a beat. As we continue on, it's worth mentioning that removing these limitations around light count and shadows, it doesn't just apply to point and spotlights, but to area lights as well. Megalights enables artists to use area lights as freely as they would any other light source. Now, whether you're using textured area lights, light functions, crisp shadows, or lovely soft shadows, you can have huge numbers of lights of any type in whatever configuration works best for your scene. Now, as we send Echo off on her next adventure, we should mention performance. What you've seen here is running live on a PlayStation 5. Megalights is included in UE55. It's an experimental feature in 5.5, and you can also check it out on the expo floor if you want a closer look at all the pretty pixels. Now, they also discussed some improvements to their animation tools, which have been coming a very long way. They've actually even added some new, like, real-time deformers you can use directly inside of Unreal Engine so that you no longer have to round trip out to your DCC tool. You can actually do all of your animation authoring directly inside of Unreal Engine itself. Also, their new uh, skeletal system has been promoted up uh, and is now considered uh, more ready to use. Uh, again, what you just saw here, by the way, with the Mega Light stuff, that is all... Um, just experimental at this point in time. No guarantee that it's actually going to go into production. The animation tools definitely matured in this release. And rounding it out, we have a couple of other announcements. We've got this new vehicle component system that was built in. We have a new uh, debugger for chaos physics for visualizing how your physics interactions are working. We got some improvements to a meta sound support. And then we also have some really interesting new tools announced around the idea of mobile UI visualization stuff. So if you're doing development for various different mobile platforms, you can get a nice preview or look of exactly how your mobile rendering will work. And ladies and gentlemen, that is a very condensed version of what Unreal Engine 5.5 is all about. Again, no release notes about this right now, and I do need to caution, once again, this is preview. Do not use this in a production environment. And when we get to the beta phase and the final release, of course, I will cover it here on the channel as well. So if you are not already subscribed, please do so or consider doing so anyways. And let me know what you think Unreal Engine 5.5. You excited? Is it interesting? Let me know. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.